Thank you, Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, faithful God. We bless your holy name. We honor you. Mali Hazel Faro Kusa Prandi Hale Adu Pradia. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Master Jesus. We honor you. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Father, for another wonderful day. We honor you, Almighty God. We are grateful. We are thankful. We are thankful for another wonderful day. Thank you, Almighty God, for this is the day you have made. We are glad in it. We are grateful. We rejoice in it. Thank you for bringing us to another wonderful Sunday, another wonderful day. Oh Lord, I bless your name. I glorify your name. I join the host of heaven to bless you. You are God indeed. And there is none else like you. There is none that I can liken unto you, O God. There is none comparable to you in heaven and in earth and in all the deep places you are God. You are the God that has made the heavens your throne and the earth is your footstool. Father, we bless you. Father, we exalt you. We declare your name, O Lord God, be exalted. We honor you, Almighty God. Lord, we are, we are grateful to be called your sons and your daughters. We thank you, Almighty God, because, Lord, we know before we gathered, you are here with us. Holy Spirit, we honor Jesus. We glorify Jesus. Lord, open the heavens over us today. Open the windows of heaven over us today. Hear us, O God of heaven. And answer us in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you, Lord, because of the man and the woman that will be hearing me today. They will hear your voice in the name of Jesus. I thank you for that child, for that young man, for that young woman who is listening, who will be hearing you today. Lord, they will hear the word of life. Their life will never remain the same in the name of Jesus. Thank you for joining me today because I know God will bless you today. Thank you for coming to Restore Us House International Ministries. We are based out here in Stratford, London. If you are in the vicinity, if you are in the environment, you have friends, you have families that are looking for a good church, a good family church, visit us. I know the Almighty God will bless you. He has good thoughts for you. He has good plans for you. Share this with somebody. Invite somebody to hear this sermon. This will change your life. This will bless your life in the name of Jesus. Invite somebody to share this with you. I invite you fathers and mothers. I invite you my brothers, my sisters. Invite a friend. Tune in to this service and your life will never remain the same in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Again, I welcome you to this broadcast. I know that God has something good planned for you and your life will never remain the same in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah to Jesus. I am grateful to God because God is doing great things. Are you thankful to God that God has brought you this far? Why don't you invite other people to join? Please comment. Please join. Thank you for those that are joining. Thank you for those that are commenting. I join you to thank your Almighty God. And I trust that God will bless your, your, your life today with His Word. This Word that you are here, it will be a word of life in Jesus' precious name. Today, I, I just want to start by appreciating God because God is good. Is God good to you? This God is a great God. It's a mighty God. And it, the best way to end the month that God has preserved you, kept you, shielded you, protected you, preserved you, provided for you, sustained you, healed you, delivered you from all the plows of the wicked. The Bible says there are many devices in the heart of the wicked. Many are the wicked plans of the enemy that God frustrated even while you were sleeping, even while you were powerless, even while you could not defend yourself. God brought you this far. The fact you can see me, the fact you can hear me, you have hope. And God is your hope. Jesus is your hope. And that's the reason I want to begin by just thanking God. My mouth is full of praises. I went to a meeting yesterday. The bishop said, just praise God in every known tongue, in every how you know how to. And I began to sing. And I will sing the same song. If you know it, please join me. I, I will sing it in a way that will glorify God. And you will be blessed in Jesus' name. And the song is entitled, My Mouth is Full of Praise. Onomujuru 
nekele. Jehovah Shamba, Anna make a legging woe or no more juru nekele. Ebe mire no for a more or no more juru ne. Agada bedi agale ke lady woe or no more juru nekele. Ebe mire no for a more or no more juru ne. Kele Akana Gloria Anna make a legging woe or no more juru make a lay. A be mirin do for a more or no more juru. Jehovah Shama Anna make a legging woe or no more juru make a lay. A be mirin do for a more. O no mo juru no e kele di ma I honor you O no mo juru ne kele e be mirin du foromo O no mo juru ne kele O no mo juru ne kele Jehovah Rapha. O no mo juru ne kele O ko si si ne dengma O no mo juru ne kele E bi mirendu foromo O no mo juru Jehovah Adonai Anna me kele gimo O no mo juru ne kele E bi mirendu foromo O no mo juru ne kele I don't know about you. My mouth is full of praises. In this month that you are about to end, the end of August, you are about to enter into a new month. By the time I'll be speaking to you, we'll be in the month of September. Why don't you appreciate God first? Let your mouth be full of praises and thanksgiving for all that God has done in your life. And that is why I am grateful to God. The Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him from them all. Had it not been the Lord who had been on our side, where would we have been? My life is hidden in Christ Jesus. Your life is hidden, your children, your sons, your daughters. The blessing of the Lord that make it rich, that has no sorrow, has been given unto me, given unto you throughout this month. The gift of life is given unto you, and I thank God for it. Hallelujah to Jesus. And I thank God that God has brought you this far. The God that brought you to the end of August, to the last Sunday in the month of August, will see you by His grace, by His mercy and power into the new month in the name of Jesus. And I know that grace that brought you this far is sufficient enough for you to take you beyond that tribulation, that problem, that issue, that concern. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. I wish I could go on and just praise God, but I want to share what God had laid in my spirit. I began last Sunday by sharing a sermon. I said, use your time well. Remember I said that? Use your time well. Today, I'm going to be adding to it, and I will say, use your time well. Follow Jesus. Oh, somebody, if you are there with me, just help me echo that. Use your time well. Follow Jesus. Can you say that to your neighbor? Use your time well. Follow Jesus. Start living a purposeful life today. A purposeful life for Jesus Christ. Follow Jesus Christ with all of your heart, with everything that is in you. Follow Jesus Christ with everything that is in you. Hallelujah. I say, follow Jesus with everything that is in you. Hallelujah. God has good plans for you. Follow him with all of your heart. Let me start by what the Bible says in Revelation chapter number 5. Look at what the word of God says, beginning from verse 1. The Bible says, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof and no man in heaven nor in earth neither under the earth was able to open the book neither to look thereon and i wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book neither to look thereon and one of the elders said unto me 
Weep not, Malahada. Weep not. Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, had prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. Hallelujah to Jesus. You see, God Almighty, you know, sovereignly, he chose to send his begotten son, Jesus Christ, to the cross to redeem the whole world. So, by his grace, by the grace of the Almighty God, we are saved through the gift of faith, which he gives to us, that we can believe in Jesus Christ. It is by that free gift that you have received, and that's where you have faith. So, faith is a free gift of God. And our salvation is also what? A free gift given unto us. Especially to them that have chosen, that God has chosen from the foundation of the world. Let me say that again. Faith and the gift of salvation, they are what? They are the free gift of God. I say, watch my word. I say, especially to those who have what? Who have been chosen from the foundation of the world. Now, a mystery then is revealed. A mystery then is now being unraveled. That God has chosen us. And that there are many others that God has predestinated from the foundation of the world that by this mystery and the power of the Holy Spirit and by the power of the gospel, uh, you know, they will be saved from the power of sin that held them bound and lose them and then they will be saved. This is what the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter number 1. Let me show you Ephesians chapter 1. Look at verse 4. The Bible says there, according as he had what? Chosen us in him before the foundation of this world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his, of his grace, wherein he had made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through the blood. We have redemption through his blood. And what also, we also have what? We also have the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. So we have enjoyed redemption through the blood of Jesus Christ. You and I, we have enjoyed, you are enjoying redemption through the blood of Jesus. You have also enjoyed what? You are enjoying forgiveness of your sins. Your sins have been forgiven. Oh, glory be to God. My sins have been forgiven so that I can go and say no more according to the riches of the grace of the Almighty God. So, who then is chosen from the foundation of the world? Because the Bible has told us that there are some that are predestinated, that are chosen from the foundation of the world. So, the mystery is this. Who are those that have been chosen from the foundation of the world? We don't know. Or do you know? Help me if you know, sir. There is a scroll with names written but are you going to go to heaven to read the scroll and find out the names of the people that are there? You can't even open the scroll. You cannot even open the scroll. You cannot even touch it. You see, this is the part where Jesus Christ said, follow me. Because you cannot go to the heaven. You cannot see the scroll. You don't know who God has chosen from the foundation of the world. Thank you for those that are commenting. Thank you for those that are just joining. Please invite somebody, share this with somebody. Thank God for, for you, for your life, that God has saved you. And this is the reason why Jesus is saying, partner with me, follow me, you know, be my ambassador, because I have committed what? Into your hands, a great ministry. That is the ministry of reconciliation. Let me show you 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. See what the Bible says. Uh, let me go down to verse number. Let me see from verse 18. Hallelujah. And then the Bible says here, All the things, all things are of God, who had what? Reconciled us to himself by Christ Jesus, and had given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God, was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation. And then it says in verse number 20, Now then, 
We are what? We are ambassadors. That's what it says. It says, now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us. God is beseeching you. He said, we pray you in Christ instead. Be ye reconciled to God. So, you must first of all be reconciled to God. So that you can then be an ambassador. Hallelujah to Jesus. So that you can then be an ambassador for Christ. He says, you be what? Be what? Be reconciled to God. You, you hearing me, be reconciled. Follow Jesus. Be reconciled because a bigger ministry, a bigger assignment is waiting for you. Hella hosa And that is what the ministry of reconciliation. You see, you have been given a time in this world. It is called years. It is called destiny to fulfill. And it is to fulfill the assignment that God has called you to be. Use that time well. It is what? To fulfill the destiny, the purpose of God. Makaruzi Prahanda, because God has saved you by His mercy, by His grace, for a purpose. Discover that purpose, live that purpose, and run your race well. Hallelujah to Jesus. You have been given a time, I have been given a time, and that time is called years, it's called months, it's called long life, it's called destiny, it's called purpose, so that you can fulfill the assignment that God has given unto you. Fulfill that assignment in style. It is the ministry of reconciliation. You have been called into that ministry. It's not only your bishop. It's not only your pastor. It's not only your, your reverend father that has been called into the ministry. You have been called into the ministry of reconciliation. Use that time well. Now, look at what the Bible says in the book of Job. Job chapter 36. You know, it says, look at verse 5. I love this. It says, Behold, God is mighty. And dispensed not any. Job chapter 36. I want to share some things with you. I'm building up some things. Because I'm saying to you, use your time well. Follow Jesus. Use your time well. Do the right thing. Follow Jesus. <laughs> You'll be rewarded. You will live. You will live to glorify Jesus. Do the right thing. Look at what it says. Job 36. I'll read again from, from verse 5. It says, Behold, God is mighty. God is mighty. And what? Despised not any. He does not want the sinner to die. He does not want any to die. Because he has in his book, he has appointed men and women for salvation, for eternal life. So of necessity, they must hear this gospel. Malayezo. Let me carry on. He is mighty in strength and wisdom. He preserved not the life of the wicked, but gave the right to the poor. He withdraweth what? Not his eyes from the righteous, but with kings are they on the throne. Yea, he doth establish them forever. And they what? They are exalted. And if they be bound in fetters and be holding in cords, holding in cords of affliction, then he showed them their work and their transgressions. Please thank you for those that are joining. You are welcome. Please continue to comment. Uh, share this with somebody. God bless you. Look at what it says again in verse number 9. Then he showed them their worship, their work, their work and their transgressions that they have exceeded. I love this verse 10. He opened also their ear to discipline and commanded that they would return from iniquity if they obey and serve him. Hey, La Husa Paria, I read this to you last Sunday. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. Hallelujah. And if they obey not, that's what it says. If they obey not, they shall perish with the sword and they shall die without knowledge. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. As you choose to obey the Almighty God in the mighty name of Jesus, you shall spend this month your days, your years, you shall spend it in prosperity in the mighty name of Jesus. You will spend your years in pleasures in the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, and then it says, for those that choose not to obey, they will perish by the sword. I pray the name of Jesus, you will not perish in the mighty name of Jesus. I say in this season, you will not perish. You will not perish. Nothing good dies in your head in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, because God has made this declaration that has been revealed, that God so loved the world 
What did he do? He sent his only begotten son. And what did his son, Jesus Christ, begin to say? Let me show you Mark. Matthew chapter number 4. From the time when he began to send, when he had his mind to save the world, he sent his son. And this is what the Bible says about the ministry of his son. Look at Matthew chapter number 4. Glory be to God. Matthew chapter number 4. The Bible says there, look at verse 17. And from that time, this is from the time, this is uh, John the Baptist. You know, before the time, after he had been tempted. From that time, he, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent. For the kingdom of God is what? For the kingdom of God is at hand. Or kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee. Remember what he did? He was preaching. And then the Bible says, And Jesus also walking by the sea of Galilee. He saw two brethren. Simon, Pete, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother. Casting a net into the sea. For they were what? They were fishers. And he said unto them, Follow me. He said unto them, follow me jesus said unto peter and andrew who are professional fishers he said to them follow me and then he says i will make you fishers of men and they straight away left their nets and followed him now pay attention remember i am speaking on that subject use your time well follow jesus jesus he saw a couple of young professionals, Peter and Andrew, and all the other people that were there. They are skilled professionals. They are skilled. They are able-bodied men. He called them, and he said unto them, follow me. He asked them, follow me. And, you know, the Bible did not recall that these people, Peter and Andrew, he didn't say they are layabouts. He didn't say he called them because they were idle. No, they are professionals. Ha, hallelujah. They are what? They are professionals. He, they are not lay about. He didn't call them because they were not doing anything. He called them while they were doing something. They were not idle. They were not lazy. They were not purposeless men. The Bible says they are professional. They are fishermen. You know, they are with a profession. Now, with your career, my brother. With your business, my sister with your busy schedules with your strategies that you have laid for yourself uh, for prosperity you can still follow jesus <laughs> some people say i'm so busy that i don't have time for fellowship <laughs> they don't see you prayer meetings anymore they don't see you in church anymore you are so busy just going travel up and down the time will come when you will account for your soul when you will account for your time because you should be a partner with jesus you should be uh, a child that will obey God, serve Him in this world, not to amass wells that will rot after you in the world. No, their whole idea, their plan of God is that you be a representative of heaven, a representative, if you be an ambassador, follow me. So I say to you, child of God, use your time very well. Now, uh, you know, I want you to say with me, I will follow Jesus. Just say that. Lord Jesus, I will follow you with all of my heart. Can you make that declaration? Lord Jesus, no matter the cloud, no matter the darkness, no matter what is around me, no matter my business, no matter my, my, my children that you gave me, no matter the husband you gave me, no matter the wife that you gave me, no matter the businesses that I have all over the world, hello, let me surprise you. There are some, go to Dubai. Those people, they are billionaires. They still have time to pray. They pray five times a day. They still have time to pray and God is still blessing them. Because God, that's why I read you, He loves all. He will still bless. He's still the God of the Muslim, the God of the atheist, the God of the unbeliever, the God of the one that abandoned. He's still the God over all of them. He created all of them. You see, just say to them, Lord, I will follow you with all of my heart. Jesus, I will follow you with all of my heart. You see, if you check out the stories of the men that He called, He called Peter and Andrew. Yeah, you will see that the world, they had amazing miracles in their fishing business because they were with Jesus. You know, they had amazing testimony in their business. Remember, they went to the sea on one occasion. They cast out their nets and they caught nothing. 
But when Jesus appeared, because when you are with Jesus, you will always reap a great harvest. The little you have, he will bless it. He will prosper it. So that you are not a beggar. Carol Zipra, in the mighty name of Jesus, you will not be a beggar. You will not beg for bread in the mighty name of Jesus. I say you will not beg for bread in the name of Jesus. You will not beg for bread. Your seed will not beg for bread. Your generation will not beg for bread in the mighty name of Jesus. Your seed will not beg for bread. My seed will not beg for bread. They shall be heads only. They shall be on top only because they will, they will serve Jesus. As you follow Jesus, you know what he will do? He will raise up your profile. Hallelujah to Jesus. He will not permit the rod of the enemy to rest upon you. Look at what Jesus said. Look at Matthew chapter 16. Look at Matthew chapter 16. Look at verse 24. Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Jesus is urging you, my friend, urging me. Thank you for those that are commenting. Thank you for those that are sharing. Thank you for joining us. Let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever will save his own life shall lose it. And whoever shall will lose his life for my sake shall find it. This is what Jesus is saying. So Jesus is saying in this uh, scripture, in effect, in Matthew chapter 16 from 24 to 26, Jesus is saying, if you follow me, deny yourself, submit your own plans to me, submit your, all of your ideas to me, submit all of your strategies Submit them to me, all of your roadmaps, all of your 10 steps to prosperity, all of your 7 points to... Hmm. Submit them to me, all of your agenda. Submit them to him and follow him. That is what the Bible says about Peter and Andrew. His brother. They left their fishing net. They are professionals and they follow him. And that's what Jesus is asking. Just follow me with your heart. And so I'm saying the same to you. Follow him. You will never lack Uzzah. Look, today in heaven, there are seats for Peter and Andrew. Because that's what it says. You will be with me in paradise. They had 12 thrones for the apostles in heaven. They are 12 thrones. You will not miss your own place in the plan of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus said, and the instruction is simple. Follow. Follow Jesus. Follow and be obedient. A simple instruction. Jesus says, follow me. So just obey. Use your time well. Use that time to follow Jesus. You see, there are many people in the world today, they are looking for who to follow. People that don't have anything, no, no blessing, nothing to give. That is who they want to follow. <laughs> people that will not improve their lives, they are the people that they are following. Look at Jesus today. Follow Jesus today and follow Jesus. Look to Jesus today. Follow Jesus Christ. He will bless you. Hallelujah. Many are following men and women of unquestionable character, of questionable character, questionable wealth as their mentors. They don't know where they are collected their wisdom from. They don't know where their, their, their resources are from or their prosperity is from. But follow Jesus. You see, many people, they are following those that, you, that, that cannot profit them or add value to their lives. Okay, let's say they can add value to your life in this world, but they cannot add any value to your eternal life. Jesus is offering you, offering me life here on earth. That's why I read Job to you. He said they will spend their years in prosperity, their days in prosperity, and their years in prosperity. That's what it says. You will spend your years in prosperity and peace. If you follow him, just follow Jesus. That is all he's asking you to do. That's what he's asking me to do. Follow me. You know, he did not call you aimlessly. He did not call me aimlessly when he said, follow me. He has a plan for you. You see, the reason he calls you and you should be mightily proud and thankful to God. You see, in this kingdom, in this world where we are in, there are attributes that you don't know. There are mysteries you don't know. He wants to show you. You can only know them by following him. You can only experience the signs, the wonders, the increase, the enlargement, the prosperity by following him. Remember, he is the word. When you follow the word of God, you will see God reveal himself to you. The spirit of God will open your eyes. It is only when you follow him. You see, if Jesus Christ is not worth following, you will not have, any, you will not have many, many, many fake prophets. Many fake people are saying now today, I am Jesus, follow me. If Jesus is not alive, if he is not real, all over the world, in Nigeria alone, there are many Jesus. 
in many parts of the world there are many jesus there are many people who call in on that name of jesus there are many people who call themselves jesus if jesus is not worth following why would you have many fake people rising up raising themselves up and say i am jesus i am alive i am not died i have come to do the work of jesus the simple question is which of them died for you which of those ones calling themselves jesus which of them died for you which of them died for your sin that is acceptable in heaven which of them died which of them shed their blood for you that became acceptable in the eyes of god jesus said follow me you see in the kingdom of god and in this world there are mysteries you will not know there are some that are that, that you have uncovered by the spirit of god but there are still several secrets several mysteries that you need to know follow jesus he will open you up so you don't need to be consulting evil oracles wicked spirits jesus will reveal them to you by his spirits remember jesus says in my father's house there are many mansions how can you know those mansions if you don't follow him in his father's house? If you are not a part of that kingdom, if you do not belong to that family, you don't. Be, you are not a partaker of the inheritance in that family. That's why he says in John chapter fourteen and verse two, he says, "In my father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you so." And then he says, "I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again for you." Only Jesus can say that. He says, "If he's going to come again for you, then follow him." And then they say, wherever I go, there you will go, that you may know also. You know, he wants you to be where he is because he loves you. Then he said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. He says, no man cometh to the Father but by me. No man cometh to the Father. So you cannot know the Father. You cannot know God the Father because Jesus says, I am the way. That is why you follow him. If you want to know the Father, if you want to have access to the kingdom of God, you want to be a beneficiary of the kingdom of God, then follow Jesus. Jesus says, I am the way. He is the one that knows the way. No other person knows the way. He didn't say this way or that way. No, 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 no. He says, I am the way. He declared himself as the way. You know, again, Jesus says, he knows the way to the Father. Nobody knows the way to the Father. Look at Matthew chapter 11. Let me read this to you. Matthew chapter 11. Nobody knows the way to the Father. And that's why Jesus says to you, follow me. No man knows the way to the Father. No man on earth knows the way to the Father. Many people say there are many ways. Jesus says, I am the way. I am the way. He didn't say, uh, in addition to me, there's... No, 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 no. I am the way. And there's nobody that has disputed that statement. Jesus says, I am the way. He didn't say there are many ways. Jesus did not say that. Don't follow what the, uh, the theorists are saying. Jesus says, I am the way. He said, no one knows the way to the Father. Look at Matthew 11. Look at verse 27. He says there, all things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. So, you want to know the Father? You must follow Jesus. You must know the Son. Nobody knows the Father except the Son. Only the Son knows the Father. And only to those whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. You want to know the Father? You can only know the Father by the Son. And that is why you follow Jesus. Don't waste your, your life seeking other methods to know God, to seek God. Follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. Hallelujah. Follow Jesus. Jesus is accepted by Him. Follow Jesus. All things you are looking for is what He says. Let me read it again. Matthew 11. He says, All things have been committed unto me. The Bible says, it pleased the Father that in him should all his fullness dwell. All the fullness of God dwell in Jesus bodily. You see the same thing is what the Bible says, that all things in heaven and earth bow to the name of Jesus. It pleases God the Father that in him. So you want to know the Father, the Bible says all the fullness of God dwell in him. So you want to know the Father, know the Son. Follow the Son, then you will know the Father. You know, John the Baptist, one of the things that he said was, no one has been to heaven. Remember that. He said, no one has been to heaven. 
and no one knows that no what is what no what is in heaven and you know what he did before he died he encouraged others to follow him let me show you so if john the baptist the one that knows jesus the one that prophesied jesus the one that baptized jesus the one that saw the heaven open the one that said this is the son of god in whom when the heaven opened he had it this is the son my beloved in whom i am well placed he had it he was there he was baptizing Jesus. So this is the one that encouraged all his own disciples, all that were listening to him when he was baptizing in the water. He says, follow him. Look at what the Bible says in John chapter 3. Um, aha, praise the Lord. And I, I, I love that. He said it very clearly. He, John the Baptist said in his proclamation, he said, He that cometh from above is above all. And all that is of the earth is earthly. And speak out of the earth. So Jesus is the one that coming from heaven. So if he came from heaven, he's above all. You know, he, his testimony about God is real, it's true. So he says, You must believe him because God has sent him. That's what he said. God has sent, he said, God gives him not the spirit in any measure. So believe Jesus. Follow him. God has given all things. That's what he said. If you look at verse 35, he said, God has given all things into the hands because God loved the Son. So follow the Son. All the things that you are looking for, all the things that you are pursuing, divine healing, good health, prosperity, abundance, success, all of those things, they are all in Jesus Christ. Use your time well, my friend. Follow Jesus Christ. And Jesus said one thing again, and this is why I, I believe he is what uh, you, you follow him, you know. Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth. So, he is worth believing. That's what he said in John chapter 14, verse 6. He is the way, nobody has seen the Father. Why do you then spend your energy? Why do you then spend your money on things that do not add value to you? Jesus says, I am the way. All things have been committed unto me, all the things you are looking for, they have been committed to me of the Father. Follow Jesus. You see, this world is not your final home, my friends. Let's talk about it. Use your time well. The time, the days, the months, the years that you have, the destiny that you have, the purpose which you have here on earth. This earth is not your final home. It's not my final home. You came from a place. You did not just land. At least, remember your mother gave birth to you. You came from a place. Scientists will call you, you are a fetus. But you are a spirit, first of all, you came from heaven, and heaven is waiting to receive you. You will not miss heaven in Jesus' name. You will not miss the home where you have come from. You will not be cast into hell in the mighty name of Jesus. So what am I saying? If you have come from heaven, and you have come to live here on earth momentarily, to glorify God, to repair this world, to be an ambassador of heaven here on earth, focus on eternal things. Don't focus on temporal things of this world. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, it says, Why will look not on things that are seen, but on things which are what? Or unseen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal. Heaven is eternal. God is eternal. Christ is eternal. The Holy Spirit is eternal. The blessings of God, they are all eternal. The promise of eternal life, they are all eternal. Thank you for those that are commenting. Thank you for it. You're welcome in Jesus' name. Thank you for sharing this sermon. The Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Some people have used charms. They don't want to die. They have joined the occult because they don't want to die. So that they will not die. But in the end, read the news. The person who initiated the court, the head of the court, is he not dead today? The chief secretary of the court, are they not dead today? They died mysteriously. They died miserably. Some have even pursued wells. They have pursued riches to the extent that they, 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 have, they, they, they have no regard for their souls. Because you want to live, let's say you want to live a hundred years. You want people to see you here on earth. That you are, you are the man. Because you want people to say you are the man. They want you to see all the beautiful houses you have by the seaside. You go on holiday every other week. It's okay. Thank God for your life. But the Bible says that what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? That is the, for the man, for the woman who chooses not to follow Jesus. 
who choose not to accept the offer of faith, the gift of faith, the gift of salvation that has been offered by God from the foundation of the world. Then the story of that man, the story of that woman becomes like the partridge. <laughs> the partridge that sits on the egg that does not hatch them. That's what the Bible says. So he said that getting rich is not by right. He said he shall leave them in the midst of his days. And at the end, he shall become a fool. That is Jeremiah 17, 11. That's what he says. Don't be like the patrick that sits upon the egg and waste time. Don't waste your life. Follow Jesus today. Don't be like the patrick that sits on the egg that does not hatch it. Why are you sitting on the egg if you are not going to hatch it? The hen sits on the egg, hits the head, it could be sit and hatch it, but the patrick doesn't. He says, so you see that getting riches, all the riches, all the things you are trying to get in this world. He says, you are getting it not by right. He says, you shall live them in the midst of his days, and at the end, they shall become what? Fools. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, child of God, you will not die suddenly. You shall not die recklessly. You will not die miserably. In this month, you will not die, you will not, you will not die mysteriously. In the mighty name of Jesus. I didn't even hear you say amen. I, I say you will not die miserably. You will not die recklessly. You will not die suddenly. You will not die mysteriously. In the mighty name of Jesus. You see, there is nothing precious as your soul, my friend. Nothing is precious to God about you. If you own your own borough, you are the president of your country for life. Very soon they will forget you. If they don't forget you, they write in the history books. They'll be reading your story. But you can't be as popular as Jesus. You cannot be as popular as Jesus. Hallelujah. Even if you are the president of your nation, you kill everybody in your country, in the end, you too, you will die. In the end, you will die. You know? What shall they profit a man? That's what Mark says. Mark 8, 36. What shall they profit a man? If he gains the whole world and loses his own soul, or what shall a man give in exchange for his own soul? Your soul is too precious to God. Follow Jesus, my friend. My time is running out. I'm going to round up soon. So, you know, God told the children of Israel. I'm going to round up here. He told the children of Israel. He said, my presence will be with you in your journey from captivity, even in the captivity to a promised land, as long as what? You serve me alone. As long as you serve me alone, I have no other God beside you. He says, length of days you will have. He promised that you have prosperity. You will have blessings. I will remove sicknesses away from you. If you do not bow to any other God, if you do not serve them, if you do not go after their work, and rather you destroy them, God says what? You will serve only me. As long as you serve me alone, I will bless your bread. Let me show you. Exodus chapter number Kali Mahansa Tolia. Exodus chapter number praise the Lord. 23. Exodus chapter 23. I will read because of time. I will just read verse 25. God says here in verse 25. He says, And ye shall serve the Lord your God. And he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sicknesses away from the midst of thee. There shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren. The length in the land, the length of thy days, I will fulfill. God says you will not die mysteriously. God says you will not die suddenly. God says you will not die recklessly. God Almighty says, as long as you follow him, you follow Jesus, you will not die recklessly, you will not die mysteriously. Rather, your life will bring glory to him in the name of Jesus. That's what it says. I will bless your bread. I will take sicknesses away from you. There shall not be cast their young. There shall be no barrenness in your life, in my life. As long as you make this God your God, you are serving him, you are following him. You will not cast your young in the name of Jesus. There shall nothing cast their young. You will not cast your young in the mighty name of Jesus. And the length of your days, Kiri Hadobratea, God says you will fulfill it. So I say this to you, my friend. I say this to you, child of God. Use your time well. Serve God alone. That's what God said to the children of Israel in Exodus 23, beginning from 24. He told them, serve only me. Don't bow to any other God. Serve God alone. So I urge you, don't bow to other gods. Don't provoke God to jealousy. Don't provoke him to anger. 
Don't allow God to, to be your enemy. Rather, allow God to be an enemy to your enemies. <laughs> God promises. He says, I will bless your bread. I will bless your water. I will take sicknesses away from your land, from your family, from your community. I will remove sicknesses. I want that. Why don't you just choose that for your own life? I want God to remove sicknesses away from my life, from my family, to remove poverty, shame, ridicule, reproach, carousy prahanda, the curse of the plague, the curse of limitations, of asheti, of alaria, labor, of limitations, to remove them, I just spoke in tongues. Kill my hand up. The, 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 the anything that limits, you say, or oh, barrenness, premature death. God says, I will remove you from you. Why don't you just follow that God who has good thoughts for you, who has God plans for you? It is appointed unto man, once to die. After that death, judgment comes. Use your time well. He said, the psalmist said, and I love this, he says in Psalm 118, he said, I shall not die, but live. That's the word of God. Psalm 118, verse 17. I shall not die, but live. Declare that I will not die. I shall not die, but live. Or whatever the curse that is prevailing around me, I shall not die, but live. I shall not die, but live. I shall not die but live. My children shall not die but live. Nothing good will die in my hands in the mighty name of Jesus. The work of my hands shall blossom. In the month you are heading into, the works of your hands shall blossom in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He said, you will agree with me, child of God. God says you make good decrees because you belong to him. Make good decrees. Decree the goodness and the mercy of God for your life. And for your community, they will come to pass because you are following Jesus. God promises you life. He promises me life. Not only in this world, but also in the afterlife. When you die, there's a guarantee that you'll be with him forever. To those that believe Jesus, I'm speaking to you as a child of God. I'm hoping and trusting that if you are hearing this gospel for the first time, you have not accepted Jesus, that you will come to the saving grace of God. You will accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will follow him. That is my whole exercise. You know, uh, many people, <laughs> their aim is to go to heaven. They want to go to heaven, but they don't want to die. Okay, I've just read Psalm 18 to you, that I shall not die but live. It doesn't mean you will not die. You see, the people want to go to heaven, but they don't want to die. Eh? Have you seen that before? You see, you, 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 when you are not Methuselah, <laughs> Methuselah lived for almost a thousand years, but now that's 70 years or thereabout. Methuselah, you know, when they say as old as Methuselah. <laughs> you know, when you are not Methuselah, even if you live as old as Methuselah, eventually you will die. For those that escape death, like Moses and Elijah, <laughs> they are coming back. They will die. All must die. Nothing goes to heaven alive. It must come down. Only Jesus. Even Jesus died before he went to heaven. You come to this corrupt world and you go to heaven without dying, you will come back here and die. That is the word of God. They will still come back here and they will die normally. People will see them. Now, I want you to think, where will you spend eternal life? Where? Where are you hoping to spend your eternal life? You have a choice. You see, the message of salvation is key. It's very important. It opens the gates. It's like a prisoner that is bound. Think about a prisoner who is bound. You are in a prison environment. You are bound. You have the will while you are. The will, you, you cannot wish yourself to be released. You are in prison. So also is a person who is in sin. But thank God for the grace of God. Thank God for the mercy of God. Thank God for the provision. You see, the message of salvation is the key that opens the gate to a prisoner that is bound in sin. The, all men are being bound to sin. They are bound in sin, in the grip of sin. We are in the grip, in the clutches of sin. Praise the name of the Lord. In the clutches of sin. In the grip of sin. And death said, I will not let them go. But thanks be to Jesus who shed his blood for us and destroyed the works of death. The ordinances of the grave, the power of the grave, he destroyed it. All the handwriting, all the written codes, all the ordinances of hell and of death and of sin, Jesus, by his blood, destroyed all. Jesus destroyed all. You know, what can I say then, child of God? 
You have the free will to make the decision today. You are reminded that your free will is in the master plan of God. Your free will is in the master plan of God. Exercise that will. It is God's desire. <laughs> you know, I say your, your life is in the hands of God. Your, your eternal life is in the hands of God. You can make that decision today. God is allowing you to hear this gospel. This is why he is waiting. This is why Jesus is tarrying, so that you can hear this gospel, share this gospel with somebody that needs to hear it, so that they can accept Jesus, follow Jesus, serve him all the days of their life. So I say to you, accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior of your soul. Then, if you have done that, you are prepared to have and spend eternity with God. All the provisions of God, all the blessings of God begins to come upon you because they are all accessible, they are all obtainable, they are all touchable, they are all the, the, the promises of God that are here and amen, they are all through Jesus Christ. Finally, because of my time, I urge you, my brothers, my sisters, use your time well. You have been given a limited time. Serve Jesus. Follow Jesus. Obey God. While you still have strength in you, use your time well. Use your time well, my friends. Follow Jesus with all of your heart. Don't be distracted. A lot of distraction everywhere. Don't be distracted. Follow Jesus. Become an ambassador of heaven. Become an ambassador that represents Jesus. Introduce someone to your king. Make God proud. When God looks down, he looks at Benjamin. I am proud of Benjamin. That's what he said to Jesus when he looked down from heaven. He says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well placed. When you follow Jesus, God in his mercy, he will look down upon you and say, this is my beloved son. This is my beloved daughter in whom I am well placed. God becomes proud of you and he will reward you in this world and in eternity. Finally, I say to you, child of God, use your time well. Follow Jesus Christ with all of your heart. Make God proud of you. And you know what God will do? He will make you prosperous. He will heal you. He will deliver you. He will keep you and you will not fail in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you richly. I trust that this message has brought blessings you to you and your family and your life will never remain the same in Jesus name. Go ahead and succeed. Glorify him. You are entering into a new month. Serve Jesus. Follow Jesus. And God will bless you in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. Amen.